so hi guys welcome back to my channel and in case you're new here for the first time my name is Elsie I am so humbled that you happened to stop by and it's my due wish that you're going to hit the button below subscribe and be a member of this family but if you are a returning subscriber my heart goes out to you for you are the reason as to why I keep on doing this how so guys today is a very beautiful moment for me because i felt so much compelled to share what i'm about to with you today and before i even go any further let me say that christ is the lord and savior over my life and i will not be ashamed to speak about god it is with so so much joy that i want to share this content today and um, it's an open discussion yes you have all the right to correct me where you feel like I went wrong or you have all the right to add wherever you feel some piece of information is missing. It's not like I am all knowing or all perfect in my knowledge. I am open to also learn from you. <laughs> so I really, really felt compelled to share what I'm about to do today because it could, it could touch the life of even one person. It is my absolute joy if it could at least change even the perspective of one person according to how they review their life you know I would so be honored and it would be glorifying to my father in heaven you know so today we are going to be talking about dating as a Christian is it challenging <laughs> Does it get easy? We're about to find out and uh, I hope we get to engage in this. It is the first time I'm doing this kind of conversation, but I am so filled with joy because <laughs> I guess most of them are through my life experiences and uh, I didn't want to, I didn't want to just hide anything. I wanted to be open to learn from you and at least to share what I've come to realize up to this point. So if you're loving this up to now, you can grab your water or your juice, anything that you feel like sipping and let get down into it. I mean, out of your own perspective, what do you find being so difficult when it comes to the dating field? <laughs> My cue being as a Christian, I mean, there are there are things that could seem challenging to most of those who do not understand what you're called for, you know, as a believer. There's some things that could seem uh, difficult, but it's my understanding that the more the more you, your face gets unveiled, you know, the more your face is unveiled and you're renewed in the spirit of God, some things just change in your life. It feels like you become a whole different new person. And uh, there are some things that probably you did regard to and a while back and they do not seem to be, you know, making sense to you anymore or rather they do not seem to be interesting anymore. So, I have aligned a few of some points that we can draw our discussion from. And the first one that I had written, it is where in the Bible we are told that do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Uh, yeah, that point, if you do not understand it properly, I think you could feel like I cannot fall in love with someone who doesn't know God so do I not get to fall in love or date someone who has no even basic knowledge of God you know and so much other stuff I'm sure that most of you have asked themselves that question but how do you feel about it <laughs> I think from my own understanding this verse, by the way, the verse comes in a Second Corinthians six fourteen. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what partnership as righteousness with lawlessness, or what fellowship as light with the darkness? I strongly believe that we were urged 
to date people of the same light you get because you as a believer remember you were saved or delivered from darkness and now that you have this light in you you should also look forward to dating the people of the light you get because I don't know why it feels that uh, have you had a conversation with an atheist or someone who doesn't really believe in God and uh, if you were dating this person does he lead you to Christ or does he lead you into the ways of darkness that's the all challenge i know at times when we are in love <laughs> when we are dating we simply want to you know we kind of assume so much stuff but what what do you think from your own end is dating someone who doesn't believe right or wrong but because based on the bible we see that it is not right like we are emphasized rather to date people of the light that is because there's no way you can associate light and darkness that never works you have been delivered or rather your eyes have been unveiled you're supposed to know the person that i also want to date in life are they going to bring me closer to god or are they going to draw me away from god you know because at the end of the day is this relationship doesn't if this relationship does not center Christ as the foundation is it doomed to grow or is it doomed to fall there are things that you have to open your eyes the eyes of your heart I mean to see things differently and I mean make you out of my own experiences I can for sure say you know we are spirits right we are spirits just in the body so if your spirit is not aligned with the other person do you think that you guys could actually be compatible that's a question <laughs> how would you play in this situation do you get to pray for this person that they encounter the light of god because you know prayer could be a very very strong love language too like if you love people you pray for them and I'm hoping that, you know, by the power of God, this person could have an exposure, you know, of the power of God and this person could maybe get to change or what do you do? But uh, in looking as what we are asked, as for as per the Bible, I highly believe it is because when you date someone who is not a believer or someone who is not of the right you know mind with you when it comes to christ this person is bound to take you down this person is bound to make you deviate i am sure that we have probably had of those scenarios where you met someone in your life and instead of your life getting better it actually got worse how right or wrong is that i do not know it's yet i'm just basing my own i think fact from the bible that you know, as Christians, we're not supposed to date an unbeliever. And Matthew, we always say, if a man loves God, he shall know how to love you more. How true is that? I think that is something I highly strong believe in. Although, now the challenge comes here where you have met someone. And this someone, yes, is a Christian, as I say. This someone goes to church also. But their heart or mind is, I think, into the ways of this world. You know, we as Christians are told that we should not be conformed to the ways of the world, but to the ways. But, but as we are renewed in spirit, we should be, you know, of the spirit and not of the world. So, I am sure, because... I have seen a scenario where it's actually something I watched and um, I, we can draw so much truth from that where this girl, this lady was trusting in God for her husband but then the enemy in his all due, uh, what do I call in his all ways, 
he knew what this chick wanted and what he did was manipulate a certain person to look exactly like how this chick would want you know because we pray for god we pray to god trusting for a man i want a man that that is a christian a man that goes to church those are my things that probably you put in your list you know when you're praying for a spouse you want hey, a man that goes to church you realize going to church is not for you may go to church and you still your heart is far from god oh, is that true or right is that true or wrong there are people that still just go to church for show sure, but you're not of the right heart and you do not know what you're going to see god for so what the enemy did in this story he went ahead and found a certain man that is also a christian he goes to church and he manipulated this guy to look like exactly what this woman wanted you know that is where now the challenges come in i highly i highly do believe this because i think i may have encountered such a scenario where you are trusting in god for a spouse but the enemy will bring to you something that looks almost almost not like but not totally but almost like whatever you've been praying for i think that the enemy just comes in the way that he wants to tear us by stealing our dreams killing the killing this idea we had you know of love and he wants to destroy your whole your whole idea of how love should feel like yeah he is the father of lies he comes to steal kill and destroy so the enemy went ahead in the story of this woman and uh, brought her man that she loved. You know, he appeared to be, oh, that is exactly my type. This is exactly what I've been praying for. This is exactly my prayers. Now getting answered, you get. But a shocking on her, once this girl had been married, things started unfolding, things that she had never known. They started just unfolding and uh, you know it just gets difficult with time so uh what i'm trying to bring out from this little story is that at times even as we are trusting in god for a man that goes to church a man that is a believer you need to be more specific in what sense because the enemy is out there looming he is looking for whom to devour he is out there looking you know forward to whom can i wreck the life whom can i destroy and he is going to probably have a mixture of everything that you think you need in a guy and put it in the wrong person and this person will come just to give you a nightmare not to make your life even more simple yes i <laughs> I think I think it's good to trust in God and just be specific on this person and how you intend for them to be. That is all what makes a difference. You get, you know, this being after the Lord's own heart and just going to church are two different things. Everyone can go to church, but not everyone probably has their heart after the heart of God. We are called to be of the ways of the spirit the ways not of this world this world is crooked it is full of sinful desires it is full of things that do not please god and but we are humans at the end of the day so i think that is one challenge that we face where someone can come disguised as the money you've been praying for and if you're not really spiritually woke or like if you were not in a position where you can discern that this is the person for me we end up making mistakes now this is where we end up getting heartbreaks that were not bound to even come in the first place but god is so full of compassion you know he loves us and he keeps on you know leading us to his will always because what are we if we do not abide in his own will yeah is this getting interesting or interesting if it's getting interesting please subscribe if you've not to this point and uh, by the way if you just came across this and you are not a believer i will not judge if it is with all due respect that you can neither choose to stay or not stay this is supposed to be at least a beautiful conversation to see our life in dating as a Christian. So whether you choose to stay or leave, I will highly respect that. But if you did stay to this point, 
God bless you. So the next thing guys that I had indicated down that I wanted us to go through was now in marriage there's another there's now a difference that comes when you are married. This comes in First Corinthians 7 14. The unbelieving husband he's made holy because of his wife and the unbelieving wife he's made holy because of her husband otherwise your children would be unclean but as it is they are holy i guess this comes way in marriage now here paul teaches us that the faith of this woman if the woman is the one that is you know a believer her faith is enough to sanctify the husband and sanctifying is making holy right so and if you go back to Genesis chapter, I had that too written somewhere. If you go back to Genesis uh, chapter 18, 22 to 26, this is where Abraham was, you know, was communicating with God about the destruction of Sodom. And this is a place where, you know, Sodom was very full of evil or rather the ways of the world had taken over Sodom and uh, Abraham asked God are you still going to destroy this place when there are just 50 people that believe in you and God said no for the sake of those 50 I will not and uh, they keep on conversing all the way what if there are just 10 people that believe in you in this city are you still going to destroy it and you God said no for the sake of those things. So I really get that. For the sake of that person that believes in that house, God is enough to set apart, you know, this family for himself. So, no, sanctifying is setting apart. According to my research and how I came to understand it, sanctifying is not being saved. You're not being saved because you're a woman. San sanctifying is being made holy or rather setting apart you get god sets us apart for the glory of his name rather so even this family in this marriage if the woman is the one that believes you get her faith is enough to even sanctify the husband which is a lovely thing and uh, now you're told that your salvation salvation is only enough for you and yourself you know you and god but now this man i guess with the sanctifying being made holy I am certain that God can work his way into, you know, saving now his soul. He's also probably able to see the light through the, the light of God through probably his woman. And by so doing, I am so, so right that at some point he's going to also convert into a believer. Because if you stay with someone, make sure your light spreads to them in the way that you impact that kind of, you know, light in them that they can also see god in your life i think it has been my desire you know because we are told we are salt to the earth and the light we are told to be light of the world and salt to the earth make sure your salt does not run out of taste and your light is not put under the table where it cannot shine on everyone that is also in your bible right <laughs> so yeah i guess now when you come to marriage that is what happens and now let's move now to another different point i think we really are not quite exhausted because we can never we can never exhaust everything that is of god it is just so much goodness <laughs> that comes from the bible but let's keep on moving so uh, we have said about being unequally yoked you know both now in your life in dating do not date someone who is an unbeliever but in marriage you get that your faith is enough to sanctify the unbeliever <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm hoping that with all due respect if you feel that i am wrong or that i am not quite navigating into the right dimension Feel free to comment me in the comment section down below. As I said, this is an open discussion. I am just saying what is written. But you're welcome to join in and speak your part too. So the other thing I think that most Christians, I think uh, they should, you know, what we should have as Christians in the dating life is standards. That should have actually been the first. 
because wo- what are we without standards you know and uh, by saying standards i don't mean that you know there are standards that people say they are too high or there are standards that are too you know they're just not making sense like they are unrealistic but in this sense i am speaking of like have a godly standard in your life have godly standards in your life in this aspect you guys <laughs> i think those that know me really well if my friends are watching okay <laughs> not one as ever to me probably my standards are too high but i am sure maybe some of you have also gone through the same thing where you feel like maybe you know what you want and you're not going to settle for less which is okay i highly believe as a christian why should you settle for less you know you know by whose blood you got saved so where are you going to settle for less this is where now if you get back to our first point like you cannot you know mingle not mingle but you cannot be unequally yoked with an unbeliever because that is a standard on its own so if you know yourself and you know whom you've chosen to serve and you know probably everything that god speaks about our lives in dating and in marriage you're supposed to have standards right there are things that you can take and there are things that you cannot take do not ever lower your standards to please someone who at the end of the day does not even he does not even trust in god to begin with but now that comes as a challenge because when we feel that we are so in love again you know we 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 really tend to blind ourselves and we are already unveiled so we tend to blind ourselves in the way that there are red flags that you will clearly see or even god is trying to show you like ah uh-uh, honey this is not it but you're like no god you know i really love this person you know the way i feel the way huh? i have been in a situation i will not like Sorry, I don't know how that came to be. I have been in a situation where you've liked someone and you're even willing to lower yourself. Just to accommodate them in your life. Please do not make that mistake. There is something that will leave you crushed in your spirit. It will leave you broken. If you know there are things as a Christian you cannot do, why should you do to please this person? You know, I am really not comfortable on mentioning some things that are really cr- yes, uh, uh, um, they make me cringe. That you know, when we in love, we tend to really forget and think because you know, I love this person, I can do this, and it's not according to the laws of God. So have really standards, and if we want to. At least compare this in a reference to one of the Bibles verses, Bible verses that I had quoted. That would come from Proverbs 25:28. Let me read for you what it says. Is a man without self-control is like a city broken into and left without walls. I take the self-control into the standards because they go hand in hand. I think it actually means the same thing. You controlling yourself is like you having standard too. This I can do and this I cannot do. You know, there's a limit to everything in life. But now if you tend to break down your walls in order to accommodate something that even first of all is not godly, how does that help because this i think is one of the challenges that we face as christians that is something i have found myself doing i will not lie where you can do something and it should not be done you know but i can say these are things that i've done probably before having the light in my life before getting the wisdom before getting my face unveiled to know this and this uh, nah now having seen the light of god differently i know what matters what should be and what should not be how does it apply in your life guys have you ever gotten to that point where you ever did something and then just you did something for the sake of someone and then it it left you feeling even mad at yourself <laughs> yes 
it, it leaves you feeling even more mad at yourself than you are mad at the other person truly and I know that is the work of the Holy Spirit we are told that the Holy Spirit you know he compels us to like uh, to confession if you feel the guilty I have written that somewhere in my diary but I cannot remember this the exact statement but it's it's just something that says when you feel so much guilty of something that you've done the holy spirit will lead you more to confession so that you know that thing can be forgiven and that you do not go back to it but rather now if it comes to the things of the world if you feel guilty with the things of the world that is where people you feel pressured in a way that you do not know where to go and people take things into their own hands i hope that is making sense so yeah, stick to your standards. Stick to your standards. If you know this and this is what the Lord tells me and I shall not do less, please do not do it in the sake of pleasing the other person. If after all, I highly believe if after all, the person that you're meant to be with, this person will actually make things more easier in the sense that he will not be pressing to you, okay? He will not be pressing to you. Like if we know we are told, now we will get out to that at another point. That is something else that I'm about to see. But stick to your standards. And so the other thing I felt, uh, we as Christians, have you ever gotten to that point in your life where you feel like nobody sees you? Yeah, probably you have been praying for a spouse. You have been trusting in God for probably a woman or for a wife or for a husband. And you feel like, it's not happening it's taking too long how am i not even being seen you know you think that at the moment you just go ahead and pray and tell god everything you need to say about this person you're sure that if i step out and probably go in a crowd there will be someone that will spot me you know those are just things that i've imagined before and i thought that it was going to be easy but it doesn't actually so uh, there is to that point where you feel like you pray and God is silent. Yeah, things are taking longer than you expected. So is it because, you know, you're not praying right? Or is it because, uh, is it because, you know, God doesn't want to answer your prayer specifically? I, I think I am trying to bring out the things out of my own experiences there have been those times in life when you felt like i felt like no one ever saw me as much as i prayed to god and uh, i needed a husband <laughs> but let me tell you according to the comfort that the word of god has given me when you feel so much like you're hidden you get like when i'm in front of people it's like i am hidden no one sees me i know for a fact that god does that for a reason yes god wants to hide you because you are precious god wants to hide you because if you are seen by everyone everyone wants to have a taste of you <laughs> i don't know the perfect way to to just key to bring that out but i think that could be what goes hand in hand with what i'm trying to uh explain to you you cannot be seen by everyone you cannot be loved by everyone right it's just like the vast that people you the the, the proverb that people say much you know nowadays like a friend well it's actually i think it's in the way yeah, it's in the bible because everything is in the bible from our birth to death it's all in the bible where you know a friend to all is a friend to none so i believe that you cannot have everyone see you you cannot have everyone like you you cannot be everyone's type as sad as that seems to be uh that is the reality as much as you may feel gorgeous in your gorgeousness believe me you may not be someone's type as much as you think if i enter into this place and there are some cool dudes that i can probably you know that i can have their heads turn <laughs> i think it doesn't work like that at the moment you've given your life to god in total surrender he also has the mandate to know who shall see you, right? 
he knows the person that shall see you for you are not for everyone if we go back to the creation in the story of adam and eve that is in genesis 1 right adam was not he was not satisfied he was not satisfied like god could see it in him that something was lacking in his life he had given he had given him everything the old creation liked to be in charge of but adam was lacking something and that was a woman and this is where it comes in the way that he had to go into a deep slumber and take out his rib and make eve for adam so uh the lord god caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man and while he slept he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh and the rib that the lord god had taken from the man he made into a woman and brought her to the man then the man said this at last you know he had to feel there was the only thing lacking this at last bone of my bones and flesh of all of my flesh she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man <laughs> i did something that just moved him in because when he saw her he knew this is what was lacking you get god had to see that indeed it was not good that he should be alone i think in all his normalcy or you know his you know state of mind there is just something that was missing until this at last that is when he saw her he said this at last it, it brought a kind of satisfaction when he saw Eve so I highly believe that we are all hidden or like God God kind of makes us for just one person a man for a woman right I highly do believe that without the person that you were made for seeing you it, it will always feel like you're unseen no matter how much you may go out with many people you may date many people you will never truly feel a sense of belonging if it's not with this person that was made for you that is according to how i understand or how i feel it's the nature of the world it's the nature of you know it's the intention of god or rather it's will so when you feel like no one sees you i am so certain that god has a plan god really has a plan even when we do not see even when you pray those prayers and you feel like he is silent believe in your heart that he's working right isn't it in the bible we are told that we have it's out of the faith that we have you know we believe out of the faith that we have not inside you cannot believe from the side from what you see you do not need to see what god is doing for you to believe you need to literally trust that he has the best intentions for you so the challenge comes where you know time is going the years are finally catching up uh you are a single woman or a man and you haven't really, really kind of you know met this person i really i really do believe that god is not god is not uh limited to time god is not limited to time in a way that if you thought at by 28 i should have settled had even my first child and that has not happened we do not get to control God. We do not command him to work. We actually are urged to make sure that our desires go hand in hand with his will for us. And he is never late. You know, I got to listen to this man of God again where he said, you know, when we call God El Shaddai because he's the multi-breasted one. You know, where a woman, we have two of those just up here. And probably, let's assume you have triplets or quarterplets let's assume so does it mean that if two are feeding from me i do not care about the other two no it is because i also care for them and their time is coming i have to finish what i'm doing with these two in order to get to the other two so god being el shaddai he has his own way and plan for each and every one of us do not ever feel like you're left out do not ever feel like you know 
when will it ever happen for me? Your time will come. And God in all his glory must be glorified because that is the utmost purpose for him in this life that we have. It is to bless us to, you know, to make sure that our life is for the best and for that his name will be glorified in our lives. So another thing that I had written to kind of explain further a little what i thought on feeling like nobody sees you it is in proverbs 31 10 to 11. i had made i had record i had filmed that part sometime uh proverbs 31 10 to 11. let me tell you what it says an excellent wife who can find she is far more precious than jewels the heart of a husband trusts in her and he will have no lack of gain. We as wives, or rather you, are trusting in God, you know, for him building you to become a wife material. You are far more precious, you know. So, and you know something that is precious is really hard to find, like gold. You're precious than jewel. That is what the word tells us. So I highly do believe that if you feel like you're hidden and nobody sees you, just remember for a fact. Remember for a fact that it's just maybe God's time hasn't worked yet. Because in Isaiah 60, 22, we are told that he says, he, God says that when the time is right, I, the Lord, will make it happen. Just imagine that. If you even have doubts, I guess that is what has given me so much hope that most of the time, even when I tend to be discouraged due to some words, you know, that you may receive from other people as well, I have not done this yet, where have you, you know, you should be a mom by now, you should, huh? There are things, yes, you know, you desire, but that is one of the words of God that is one word that gives me so much courage when the time is right I the Lord will make it happen he never lies God has a track record of keeping his word so if you are not being seen or if you feel like you're not getting anyone to date rather that is the whole reason as to why I'm saying this your time is coming I also had written two stories where we drew the kind of you know to understand how god has a timing for us i had written like remember ruth if you have read the bible if you've read the book of ruth you will remember that ruth was actually married and her husband had to die you know and i believe that if your man dies you know that leaves you devastated you feel like probably no one would even ever love you anymore no one would even ever notice you because come on but that was not the plan of god ruth had to stick with naomi and as they went to the land i really don't remember the name of the land <laughs> but this is where she got to meet boaz you get and as she met boaz boaz became the man that was destined for ruth how beautiful is that what if ruth had given up when naomi told her and the sister the sister the sister-in-law you know both after their husbands died the sons of ruth ruth told them like i do not have any more children for you to marry so the best thing you can do is you can leave go back to your homeland you know when it's still early you know it's the kind of telling them you know you guys can go back from where you came from you can go if you want you know you can go ahead and settle the other woman left, but Ruth stuck with Naomi. Huh. That was more of my destiny connector, you know. Naomi was kind of a destiny connector because she is the one who was related to Boaz. But even before that happened, Boaz noticed Ruth in the fields when she was gleaning. When she was gleaning in the fields. And it was interesting, like, who is that girl? Who's that lady? You know, in that sense, like, who's that woman? And he told the other workers that, you know, leave some of the uh, wheat. Was it wheat? Yes, leave some more of that. If it wasn't wheat, whatever it was that she was cleaning, I really do think, I think it's wheat, but you know, the, the food that was in the farm, he was like, leave some more behind so that as she's cleaning, she can have more to herself. Oh, it feels good when you know god has a plan in his timing i remember boaz was a wealthy man Aha! boaz was a wealthy man in a way that i think 
in the way that you know you trust god because god will do something in his own time it's not like we all <coughs> destined to meet like you know people that are wealthy some of us you know we might build from foundation with someone and we build the wealth together rather than i meet him with the wealth but in this essence boas came as the package as the package that god's timing yo god's timing never lags god's timing never lies i think i really do feel it is good to stay encouraged it's good to stay trusting in god even when you do not see what he is working at believe me even when you cannot see what is happening behind the curtains it says god is the author of our stories right do you think that he has a he has just like a a kind of failure story for you do you think he has like it's not in his plan for him to perish us he tells us the plans that he has for us are for us to do good or rather than to prosper or rather to prosper rather than perish and as long as your heart stays true in god in the way that you know i love god he is my desire i need you know i need him more than every other thing by seeking his righteousness righteousness and his kingdom and all things will be rewarded to you in the way that you remain faithful we also told by god through the same bible that there is no ear that has heard not there is no eye that i've seen or the heart that can even imagine or begin to imagine the plans that i have for my beloved the people that love him in short so this is kind of a little more of an encouragement to those that feel like things will never work i've seen people even in their mid 30s or in their 40s remember sarah she is a woman in her 70s she was 25 who would ever believe she would give birth at such a time i think the timing of the lord is always for sure true <laughs> yeah so the other the other one was also you know uh esther this i think this goes on in hand with the grace of favor esther also if you had told her that she would marry the king probably she would have laughed at you you know hi in a former name hadassa she didn't know the kind of destiny that lay ahead but to trust in god for this kind of favor even when it comes to our husbands and you have to remain faithful you get you have to probably seek for this grace of favor because it will really distinguish you it will highly distinguish you to think like as christians we should not be so desperate that you just want to jump at the thought of you know i'm going to look for husband today and just stick your feet out and uh, go probably in some concert in some place where you know there are going to be so many gents in the hope of like you know just don't be desperate i know probably it works for some percentage of people you know you do the things for yourself <laughs> you go and present yourself you like take the shoe by yourself and you you want to you actually literally take the things that the might has into your own hands and probably it works if it does that is maybe for some people which i do not know and for some of us i guess it has to do with the timing of god again and we have to be presented as a woman in the bible we were created to attract not to chase that is my understanding he was made for who for adam she was just made and presented to adam so what makes you think you as a woman you know it's my thing to like chase this guy i'm so certain even when you chase them most of them according to my own understanding most of those scenarios do not work or rather they do not pay as you think they could have it will maybe for a few years and then after that you're like hmm. it wasn't really it because you know if you also remember from the story of rebecca and isaac do you remember how rebecca was found for isaac she was just a woman in a normal you know in my normal routine in my normal existence in during the days like in my normal day in to day out like life's lives what life's occurrences she was just a woman and the servant that was sent you went and with a sign that was said from yahweh yeah 
to who? To Abraham. They knew the sign that the woman that comes and gives you water to drink and even feeds your camels, that is the one. So me, I highly believe that you're not supposed to chase. You're made to attract. You remain in your normal era. Remain in what you should be doing. If it's your work, keep on doing. You will be seen by the right person when God, you know, when God aligns you strategically with where you're supposed to be. I highly do believe that. When it's your time, when it's the time of God, what is for you will always get you. But if you manipulate His will and take things into your own hands, you will not have the same story to share. So yeah. Oh, I think that the last one is in the matters that we find very challenging, even as Christians, is about instant gratification. Yeah, we cannot close this without speaking about that. In dating, <laughs> In dating, you feel like you're very much obliged to satisfy maybe the needs of the other person. Do you guys think it is right or wrong to to jump ahead and do what is not supposed to be done in the dating phase? <laughs> I know most of us, as again, as I said, before getting to see the light of God or rather getting to devote our lives to God, we did things. Things that didn't please God, we did all right kind of stuff and uh, yeah it really pains when you just not pains because you've been liberated when you just have to look back and be like why did I even do all that if god i would go back i would do things differently for you but again the lord is full of compassion you get he comes so long as your heart in all sincerity in all that you've been saved from and you never wants to do that again so I'm sure God is faithful and he really forgets that as he says the things of the former you shall not even remember anymore, right? So about instant gratification, I had written the verse uh first Corinthians seven, one to eight. This is really actually the second Corinthians three eighteen where it says sorry, and we all with an unveiled face beholding the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from one degree degree <laughs> from one degree of glory to another for this comes from the lord who is the spirit that is why i said you know in our former days what we did you know i think to god it doesn't matter if your heart is all in with him once your face has been unveiled once you cannot distinguish between the wrong and what is right I am sure your life gets to change from one glory to another. This is where you begin to have different testimonies. It's really nice. It's the laws of marriage. The principles of marriage. Yes, this is the principles of marriage. You can read by yourself from verses 1 to 8. But I think I should really do this because it's interesting. I mean, the Bible is a favorite book for you to begin testing today for you to begin dwelling in today i mean there is no any other book that can surpass this so please get yours if you do not have one and begin knowing the will of god because we are told the word of god is the revealed will of god in our lives so if you want to hear god speak to you you must you must make this your best friend now let me go now to the first it says now concerning the matters about which you wrote you know it is good for a man not to have sexual okay it is good for a man not to have sexual relations with a woman if i'm getting that correct but because of the temptation to sexual immorality each man should have his own wife and each woman her own husband you know the sexual relations we are told that it is good for you to have your own husband these guys applies in marriage as the title of these states it's the principles of marriage sex was made for us to enjoy right but in the principles of marriage not in dating there's a difference again and we are also told that uh, uh the husband should not give his wife a call. Oh, the husband should give should give not should not the husband should give to his wife her conjugal rights and vice versa and then we skip to verse 5 where it says uh do not deprive one another 
except perhaps in agreement for a limited time that you may devote yourselves to prayer, you know, that ufaikunyimana, in short, <laughs> that we should not deny each other the right to the conjugal right. You know, the body of my husband belongs to me and my body belongs to my husband. So we should not deny each other this is a right. They are called conjugal rights. These are things that we have to give each other unless we have both agreed that, you know, maybe probably I will be having my fasting like this and this time so we can probably not engage in these, you know. It is really indeed allowed. This, now speaking about instant gratification, you come to understand a whole difference of do you, are you willing to wait until you guys are together as one or because if you sleep with just anyone remember your soul is tied to that person spiritually i said we are it's the bible that tells us we are spirits in a human body we are spirits god is spirit so imagine just sharing yourself with many people you're connected to many souls so i don't think the instant gratification should work for you unless you're in marriage there is to verses 8 now let me just skip to verses 8 you can follow the rest on your own where it says to the unmarried no <laughs> to those who are not married and the widows i see that it is good for them to remain single as i am that is paul <laughs> that is paul speaking but if they cannot exercise self-control they should marry for it is better to marry rather than burn with passion you hear everything you don't need explaining of that which leads me now to my question guys to this point if you're still watching that is do you date to marry as a christian you know by now do you date to marry and uh the other question was you know sex on the first date or marry on the first date that is a question i have asked several people <laughs> since i think it was first asked to me i have been asking others to just hear what their feedbacks are and very people you know various people have different feedbacks and they have their own reasons but what do you prefer marry on the first date or sex on the first date so whichever you feel is more probable to you let it you know <laughs> You can actually comment in the section, in the comment section down below. The aim of us as Christians, we are told not to give out, not to give in, not to lack self-control. Because at the moment you give in, there's so much things that you can do that are not right according to God and according to his desires for us in this life. I feel like it is better for you to wait. And uh, the moment you found that person, because I hardly believe you found the right person. No one is perfect. I see it right. If you found the right person for you, I am sure that they will not be pressing. I'm really sorry for the noise, for the background noise. If you find your own person, they should not be pressing to you. You've seen people come together and agree that, you know, we can do this. We can hold on until, you know, we have married because the moment you rush to the physical intimacy with you build your relationship from an emotional connection first without getting into the physical one because you might get physical and come to realize all that you had between you two was the sexual tension rather than you know how it could play out if you guys were emotionally connected first of all and then uh, uh, yeah I think that's it for this discussion that's what I really had but I know I have so much still in my mind but I just felt that this is what we are called to do like in the dating life it's better to wait or rather like you should exercise self you should exercise self-control until you guys are one a one in God, a one in marriage, a one like in every way. Where you know this is my person, this is the flesh of my flesh, this is the bone of my bones for all eternity till till death do us part. 
so guys thank you so much if you did listen to the whole of this discussion it's been an honor speaking with you and i hope to be doing this more often leave it again in the comment section down below if you think it's interesting and you can do more bible talks we can talk more about god because he is the foundation of everything everything in this life everything should really be based on jesus because nothing is like jesus so thank you again i love each and every one of you i hope to see you next week so till next week, bye bye.